So this is part two of uh, do-it-yourself Judaism, thinking specifically about reading as as a way of doing Jewish. And this is kind of a rambling video that really probably won't interest anyone other than myself, but because I'm an introvert and I can't really talk to regular people, I just make a video like this and put it out there for anyone or no one to see. Uh, I was thinking about the fact that when I was 10, uh, and I've talked about that I come from a background that mixes Christianity and Judaism, uh, my family went to uh, a church in, in a neighboring town from where we had been going. And um, what's interesting is, so I'm, I'm 10, I several experiences happen that relate to reading, and I just kind of find interesting. One, I for the first time realized that Christians really prefer the New Testament to the Old. Um, I didn't know the word Tanakh till I was a teenager through reading, but um, I always liked the Old Testament growing up. I always just I enjoyed those stories. I, I I found them fascinating. And I'd been taught that the quote unquote Old and New Testaments were both divine scripture and uh, one was not better than the other. But I was going to this church with my family and they just really mostly preached from the New Testament. The sermons were from the New Testament. The Sunday school curriculum was New Testament uh, focused. And uh, I just really didn't like that. I even remember saying uh, I always wanted to grow up to be a clergy person. I thought I'll grow up to be a preacher and I'll just mostly be known as the Old Testament preacher. you know. Uh, and, uh, and so that has to do with reading, being familiar with one particular text over another. And so I'm 10. I'm coming into this knowledge. 10 is also when uh, the Gideons, the people who put the Bibles in the hotel uh, dresser drawers, came to my school, and I assume this is something that predominantly happens in red states, and gave every fifth grader a little red New Testament. And it was the first time I ever recalled seeing a New Testament separate. And I even asked the man, and I, I cannot believe I did, but I asked him, I said, do you have any Old Testaments? Because that's what I thought, well, you know, why, you know, that's the part I'm more familiar with. And I, I just, I don't remember the response, but that I was just kind of shocked by that. So I'm going to a church that reads from the New Testament. I'm given a New Testament. And then I'm also reading about Anne Frank. I'm reading books about Anne Frank and I'm reading the diary of Anne Frank, even though I'm 10 years old and in fifth grade. And we're also reading about, uh, we're reading in class, Number the Stars, uh, about uh, a Jewish and non-Jewish girl uh, uh, friends in Denmark in World War II. And I remember asking my parents, I don't know which one, I asked, uh, what are Jews? And there are all different answers I could have been told. And I've heard other people who talked about asking their parents, you know, what are Jews or what does it mean to be Jewish? And the different answers that they get. Uh, sometimes it's they're the people who go to church on Saturday or they're the people who don't eat pork or something like that. And what I was told was <laughs> Jews are people who when they go to church, they only read from the Old Testament. And it, it's funny, but there's like something clicked to me then. It was like, oh, okay. So I always thought that I was like this weird kind of Christian. And it turns out I'm just wanting to be Jewish. And I, I find that funny because so many people I know who are devout Christians, particularly of an evangelical nature, became a Christian or became strong in their, in their beliefs after the age of 10. And I just find it funny that at age 10, I already was like, oh, okay, so... I need to be with this group over there. I need to be. I, I need to be with the the Jewish group. Um, you know, if if you know, I I was cool with the Christians up until then, and it's like when I found out, it's like, oh, there's a separate group that does it this way. It's like, oh, I got to be over there. I, I'm 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 in the wrong group. I'm sorry. I, I I need to go over there, and I think it's funny because it involves familiarity with the text. I, I mean, I was 10. I, there could have been this idea that, okay, well, one day you'll grow into the New Testament. And the thing is, I love the New Testament. I read the New Testament as a, as a piece of Jewish literature. And I know Christians who study the New Testament as Jewish literature, but they don't read it that way primarily. It, for them, it's a sacred text that, that speaks to them in a certain way. Whereas for me, I love it the way I love the Book of Maccabees. It's Jewish literature from a certain time period. 
Um, and, and I even consider it sacred in the sense of I consider all Jewish literature sacred. Uh, I love uh, Itzhak Monger, who writes the, these Purim stories. Uh, I love uh, Yaakov Gladstein. I love, I love Jewish literature in general. Uh, so, you know, I, I have no problem with the New Testament in that way. But at the time, I just, I, I, and I think about it now, it's like, it's funny that I, I realized through these literary occurrences, hearing mostly New Testament uh, sermons and topics and lessons in Sunday school and being given a New Testament by itself and reading about Anne Frank and reading the diary of Anne Frank and even reading this book in fifth grade about a Jewish girl and a Christian girl in Denmark and realizing, oh, I belong over with this group. Um, before that, I had, we celebrated Christmas, but I had a Hanukkah coloring book, and, and I kind of viewed Hanukkah as kind of like a type of Advent leading up to Christmas, um, and, and really realizing that, that being Jewish was its own thing. And I just find that interesting that, that even then there's that literary connection where it's like, oh, I, I'm familiar with this book, so I should be with this group. Whereas if you're familiar with this other book, maybe you belong with the, this other group, this dominant group. And I will say that even my love of Jewish literature, especially Yiddish literature and translation, it, it really comes about because no matter what my religious feelings are, and they, they come and go and they wax and wane like the moon, um, for me, what I love about reading uh, Isaac Besheva Singer uh, Itzhak Munger, Yaakov Glotstein, Philip Roth, Saul Bellow, and these are very, very different types of Jewish authors, and some would not want to be called Jewish authors, but would like to be called American authors, uh, in the case of Bellow or Roth. I'm reading people whose religious orientation is towards the Hebrew Bible, even if and even especially if they reject it. And they live in a world that is both secular and then has underneath it in the larger society Christian undertones. And I just find myself understood when I read the literature of people who, like me, grew up with the Hebrew Bible as kind of their primary religious text or focus text that it, it's in the background whether you want it to be or not and so I can read uh, you know this speech by um, some some communist uh, speech and in, in some Yiddish piece of literature that's been translated and they might reference Moses or they might reference uh, the plagues of Egypt and there's just this this awareness that Below the surface, there is this textual history and tradition that I share. And that's why when I read Jewish literature, I feel like I, I find myself because that's me. Whether I grew up to become a devout Orthodox Jew or whether I walk away from religion altogether, I will always be someone whose life was shaped primarily through a story. And that story is told in the Tanakh. And for me, the New Testament will always be that text that the, those around me, and including those very close to me, including the person I love with all my heart, um, that it shaped them and it shaped society as a whole. And that I live in this big world that underneath, and I live in the Deep South, so it's not always that underneath, uh, is Christian. And so I can read uh, Yiddish literature where you have this Eastern European person who is not really religious, but they live in a world that's torn between secularism and nationalism with Christian uh, undertones. And yet there they are as a person whose natural religious leanings, even if they are a complete non-believer, is to the story of the Hebrew Bible. And if they're from a very religious family, then also Jewish liturgy, uh, other traditional texts. But always at least to the Torah, to the five books and the Midrash interpretation of the Torah. 
Um, so not just Joseph being sold by his brothers, but the Midrash regarding Joseph and his brothers and Potiphar's wife and all these things. And uh, I just find that interesting that that my my really understanding at a very early age, like, oh, I'm in the I'm in the wrong group here, you know, with the with the church, with the Christians, I'm in the wrong group. And I went on living a life that was mixed Jewish and Christian for many, many years. And I converted to Judaism. I always said conversion for me was like uh, was was twofold. One, I wanted to be a part of a, an active Jewish community. That never happened. Two, it was like dog tags. Dog tags always have your religion on them uh, in case uh, something happens, uh, and it's also on file. And not even just tragedies such as death, uh, but even for uh, life cycle events. You're getting married. They'll they'll know. Okay, if it says Protestant, we're going to try to get a Protestant minister. If it says Catholic, we're going to try to get a priest. Um, if it says Jewish, we're going to look for a rabbi. We're going to ask if the person you're marrying is Jewish or not, and that'll help us figure out which kind of rabbi to get. But um, I, I just find that interesting that the the way a literary familiarity um, played in my journeying specifically to Jewish identity at a very early age, rather than later in life. Although conversion was put off for many, many years because it was just impossible to do. Um, at a very early age, recognizing, okay, this is where I belong. And recognizing that's where I belong in the greater tradition. In, in other words, I feel more comfortable with Christianity as a Jewish person than if I were trying to live as a Christian. Um, I, I feel that that my place in the Christian world has always been as a Jewish person. And uh, and for me, because I do live more in the Christian world than in the Jewish world at large, although I feel like in my, my interior intellectual life it, it's Jewish, because I do live in a more Christian world, um, being Jewish only, rather than kind of living in this mixed world like I, I kind of grew up in, but being Jewish only was a way of saying um, this is ultimately where I belong and it created a boundary in which there weren't uh, because I, I always found growing up um, and in and, and high school and even in college because again I was not able to convert for quite a while people were fascinated by my background and the kind of idiosyncratic uh, syncretic knowledge that I had of both Judaism and Christianity but ultimately they always wanted to make me one of them and conversion was a way of saying okay the them that I'm a part of is the Jewish people and it doesn't mean that you and I can't be friends it doesn't mean that we can't relate to one another or talk and ultimately as someone who lives in a non-Jewish area it doesn't mean that I can't partner with a non-Jewish uh spouse but and and as a teacher who teaches all non-jewish children with the exception of one uh it, it doesn't mean that i can't love the children that i teach it, it doesn't mean that i can't love um african-american caucasian la, latino multiracial uh muslim it, it doesn't matter but it puts me in a certain understanding of who i am and I just find it interesting that it started with a with with literary familiarity and at a very early age and that my my life progress and track has went the way it's went essentially because of that because of all these multiple things that converged when I was 10 years old having to do with textual familiarity and if one person finds this interesting at all I will be absolutely shocked, but that's all.